uh, removes um, this um, this problem. Okay. The phenomenon I'm getting ready to describe to you is what's called nucleotide excision repair. Nucleotide excision repair. As its name would suggest, you're removing a batch of nucleotides by excising them, which means cutting them out. This one is probably the easiest of the different types of repair to understand. Your cells have a protein in them that look for bumps or unusual things in your DNA. These bumps arise from, for example, two thymines reacting with each other. Okay? When that happens, and this is in E. coli, so the naming system is different than what it is in your cells, but when that happens in E. coli, there is an ex something called an exonuclease that recognizes, okay, here's the problem, and I'm going to cut on either side of it, and then I'm going to use a DNA polymerase 1 to fill in that short gap, a DNA ligase to tie everything together, and I'm fine and dandy. Okay? You overload the system, errors are going to make their way through. All right, so for routine sorts of things, this works fairly well and keeps errors from being propagated uh, as a result of damage that's happening to the DNA. Okay? Uh, let's see, hold on here. Okay, so another type of damage that can happen to DNA is very interesting and it's called oxidative damage. Oxidative damage occurs when reactive oxygen species are produced in your cells and they're not fixed. Reactive oxygen species are produced in your cells and they're not fixed. You're producing reactive oxygen species as you're sitting here. You have enzymes that in most cases are taking care of those and keeping them from, from reacting with something. But if, they, if the reactive oxygen species first makes it to the DNA before the enzymes fix the reactive oxygen species, then that can actually bind with, the oxygen can bind with uh, bases in your DNA and cause problems. I'll give you a real good example of one problem. Reactive oxygen species can react with guanine bases fairly readily. And they create an intermediate called 8-oxoguanine. 8-oxoguanine. That simply is a guanine that on Carbon number eight, it ha or position number eight, it has an oxygen where regular guanine doesn't have that. Now that single change that I just described to you allows that guanine to form a stable base pair with adenine. So 8-oxoguanine will form a base pair with adenine. If that's not fixed, when DNA replication comes along, What's the DNA polymerase going to see? It's going to see 8-oxoguanine, but it's going to think it's a T. And it's going to put an A in adjacent to it. So now, all of a sudden, you've made a mutation. One of the cells is going to get the wrong sequence as a consequence. Mutation, of course, can lead to death. Mutation can lead to cancer. Mutation can lead to a variety of things. And so cells have protective mechanisms to hopefully avoid or at least reduce the amount of oxidation that's happening of that nature. The system that repairs that is called base excision repair. It's different from nucleotide excision repair, at least slightly. Base excision repair involves uh, something called a DNA glycosylase. Almost done here. Which binds, okay, and removes the damaged base. So it notice it's not messing with the strands. It's removing the base, and that's why it's called base excision repair. The strands are still there. The only problem being that you now have a missing base. You've got a hole in the DNA, as it were. The rest of the system is very much like the excision, the exonuclease I talked about before. Something comes in, it opens it up. It allows DNA polymerase to come back in and fix it, and so by the end, everything is fine and dandy. So the, the, the distinguishing difference of base excision repair is this DNA glycosylase, which removes the, specifically the damaged base. Yes, ma'am. Intensity. 
So when you're sitting in a tanning booth, the reason that you can sit there for 20 minutes and get a good tan is they're blasting you. They're blasting you and they're blasting you and overloading your system immediately. It would take you a lot longer to get out in the sun and do the same thing. That's the problem. Yes, sir. Good question. What conditions uh, increase oxidative damage? Well, uh, there's several things that, 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 that can happen. One is uh, a, a reduction in your amount of antioxidants. So one of the reasons people are very interested these days in levels of antioxidants in your body is that these provide protection against increasing uh, uh, reactive oxygen species. Vitamin C. Linus Pauling was very fond of vitamin C. The man who, building is, who the building next door is being named for was very interested in vitamin C because he knew it acted in the body as an antioxidant and provided some protection. It's one of the reasons he took massive amounts of it. Today we know that probably those massive amounts aren't uh, the best thing to take, okay? But he was very interested in it for that reason. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, okay? Vitamin A, to a lesser extent, is an antioxidant, and we'll talk later about uric acid being an antioxidant. So that's one variable uh, that's there. Um, it's the one that you have the most control over. As you get older, your enzymes for handling reactive oxygen species become a little bit less abundant. And so if you have enzymes protecting you, when you have fewer of them, then you're going to have more reactive oxygen species. I saw another hand right here. Did you have a question? Stuart? It makes it look to the polymerase like a T. That's correct. How does it know, how does this one know which one to react on that one? Good question. So this enzyme, this DNA glycosylase, actually is specific for recognizing that base. Okay? So it's not a DNA polymerase, and it doesn't have, it's not fooled in that way. It actually recognizes it and binds to it. Yes, back there. Good question. Is guanine the only base that gets oxidized? No, it's not, but it's the one about which the most is known and the most problems are known. But any base can be oxidatively damaged. Very good question. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Let's call it a day, and I shall see you guys tomorrow. So when you've got uh, a, uh, just a second here, turn this, this down. Um, when you've got a reactive oxygen species, what that means is that that uh, oxygen has an extra electron. So anything that has unpaired electrons in general is reactive. Oxygen is the most common thing that happens in your body that has those. A, a, um, an antioxidant, what it does is it's basically helping to deal with that electron and is becoming oxidized in the process. So what it's doing is it's typically donating another electron so that that electron can no longer be unpaired and can be dealt with. That's okay. basically what it's doing. Okay. And then what happens, so when it donates that electron, what happens to that?